There's a, there's a plateau that straddles uh, eastern Italy and western Slovenia called the uh, Kras Plateau. And that's where Karst comes from because a couple of German geologists came in and started working on it and they called it the Karst Plateau. Germans like to do stuff like that. And so ever, ever since then, the geology, uh, which is very similar to uh, what we have uh, here, any, any place that has that kind of a geology is called karst geology and everywhere in the world. And um, so these areas are basically underlain by limestone and or dolomite, uh, which are carbonates and uh, can, be, uh, can, can be dissolved by uh, uh, the weak acid called carbonic acid, which there's a lot of. Uh, all of the uh, colored areas on this map are karstic areas. You'll notice that Florida is intensely karstic. Uh, a new sinkhole opened up uh, near Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> Not close enough to do what we needed to have happen. Here's the Driftless area. You can see it's entirely a karstic area. Um, here we are in, um, I don't even know why I did that. Basically, uh, what this is saying is that uh, all of the Driftless area of, uh, of uh, uh, Wisconsin are, are karstic. Here's uh, Bosco Bell, in case you feel lost. Uh, these are the rocks of the Driftless area. They go from down below to up because that's what we geologists do that because the older rocks are on the bottom and history always goes from uh, old to new. Uh, the bottom uh, uh, rock on top of the became, oh, let me do this first. So Cambrian rocks uh, all the way up to, uh, to the Jordan sandstone and then everything above that, or the vision in terms of time. We're talking about a span of time from 545 to, say, 443 million years ago. Uh, that's kind of important because uh, those rocks were developed over a long period of time. And so uh, let's do this. Um, so if, uh, you can think of up as the, as the direction of time, right? And if you're a geologist and you're smart enough, uh, you can look at the rocks and tell whether the, whether the water in which the, uh, the rocks were deposited were deep or shallow. And over time, that's pretty much how it works. Uh, sometimes the uh, land, uh, it was always very shallow, no more than, say, 100 feet deep. But every now and then, uh, areas would be a little bit above water. So, for example, um, during water walk time, uh, the area was above sea level. Uh, again, during uh, Jordan time, at the at the base of the uh, Ordovician rocks, and again when the Saint Peter was deposited. By the way, the Mount Simon sandstone is where you where uh, cities get most of their water around here. It's it's maybe a, a thousand feet deep. It's called the Mount Simon because geologists always name a rock for, from where they first studied them, and this was studied in Mount uh, Mount Simon, Illinois. The Eau Claire formation was first studied in. Uh, <laughs> the Waniwak in Waniwak, uh, Wisconsin, Tunnel City in, in uh, Tunnel City, Iowa, St. Lawrence Formation in St. Lawrence, Minnesota, Jordan Sandstone, St. Lawrence uh, uh, in, in Minnesota as well. The Prairie du Chien Dolomite, first studied in, in Prairie du Chien, and the St. Peter, first studied in, you know, uh, yeah, in Minnesota, yeah, it was there. There used to be a river called the uh, Saint Peter River, and that's where it was first studied in Minnesota. Now it's called the Minnesota River, but uh, the rock is stuck with that name. And at the very top, you have the, uh, the what uh, Wisconsin geologists call the Platteville Galena uh, uh, limestone or dolomite. What uh, Illinois geologists call it the Galena Platteville dolomite. It's the same rock. <laughs> Okay, the important thing is that uh, those in yellow, the one along the Jordan and the St. Peter, are all sandstones that uh, are made of very nicely well-rounded sands that, that work as aquifers. Unfortunately, those, those self-same well-rounded uh, sands are also what uh, frac sand miners want. 
Yeah, we can, we, that, that's another another topic. Okay, uh, so basically, the reason why those are, are frac sands, are well-rounded sands, and good aquifers is because they were rounded over a very long period of time. And if all the grains in the rock are round, there are a lot of voids between those grains that can hold water. Uh, the uh, Galena Platte Mill is karstic, as is the Prairie du Chien Dolomite. Uh, in, up, up north in, uh, in Vernon County, we don't have the, the, uh, the uh, Galena Platte or Platte Mill Galena, but you do have it here. Uh, it's Crawford County and Grant County have both of them, both of them. So those two counties are more karstic than further north. Uh, a couple of groundwater basics. An aquifer is a water-bearing rock from aqui for water and fur for bearing, like in Christopher, the guy who carried Christ, right? He was the Christ bearer. Um, the typical uh, aquifer doesn't come out of a, an empty hole in the ground full of water. It comes from, from, from rocks that are saturated with water. And if the grains are round, then it, it can contain a maximum of water, amount of water. So here in the Driftless, we've got, we have been blessed uh, by nature and God with several really good aquifers. Um, the important thing is that because the water has to flow between uh, sand-sized grains, they can only flow very slowly. That's, that's kind of important. Um, so, I said that already. <laughs> in a karstic rock, you do get water in, in cavities. Like, for example, in Florida, they, they have large empty caves full of water. And they build a subdivision on top of it. Subdivision needs water. Lo and behold, the, the cave loses its water. And so you get giant sinkholes that entire subdivisions can fall into. Yeah. The important thing in a karst rock is water not only occupies fractures, but can travel through those fractures down into the underlying rock. And water can flow as fast as 100 feet, 100 feet per day. That's not uncommon. And so the, the, the net result is, if you have a karstic rock at the surface, water can flow rapidly through those rocks into the aquifers where the water can travel only very slowly. Which essentially means if you pollute <coughs> a sandy aquifer, it will remain polluted forever. So that's why we are so vulnerable. Uh, here's a picture of uh, just a diagram of what uh, a, a karstic rock would look like in the beginning, and that's what it would look like over time. And the more the more those fractures get widened by water percolating through and dissolving the rock, the wider the fractures get, and the faster water can flow through. Does that make sense so far? Uh, the, uh, the resulting uh, things are uh, the, the solution uh, features are things like widened fractures, caves, sinkholes where, ca where caves collapse, uh, disappearing string. I have a diagram that'll show that. This is out of Minnesota, but it works well all over the Driftless. So here are a couple of fractures. Uh, here's a cave. If a cave collapses, you have, lo and behold, a sinkhole. And that sinkhole will serve as a funnel. Water will flow into that sinkhole and then go down. Okay? You have disappearing streams. On the surface, you have a stream and all of a sudden it's gone. Why? Because it went down and formed a, an underground stream, which eventually will come out as a spring that will feed a trout, a trout stream. Are there any trout fishers here? Okay, that's what, that's, uh, you can be grateful because that water is really cold. Uh, coming out of the ground, that's what trout bought. Here's a swallow where it swallows water and brings it down into the same thing. Okay, now, this is the first point I want to make. Anytime uh, CAFO or whatever uh, build, they say, we're going to put the water in a pond, but we're going to be very careful. We're going to line the bottom with thick clay and really good geotextile, so no problem. But supposing you have a cave underneath that collapses. Basically, what I say is, I don't care what the impoundment is for in the karstic area, it's wrong. Everything, whether you, whether you want to build a dam to contain water for flood control, that's bad. We had a couple of those collapse in, uh, in Vernon County in 2008. Um, blank injunction, no 
impounded water in cars, period. Unless, of course, you do some very fancy geology and know what's down there, which they never seem to want to do. <laughs> oh. Here is, um, th this is a, uh, an article that came out uh, in the 90s. Um, they had, uh, on 28 April, they had six sinkholes that, uh, that were never there before that all of a sudden appeared in front, in, in, a, in a wastewater treatment lagoon. And the results were bad for the, the water in the surrounding area. Uh, uh, ele elevated fecal coliforms, uh, and, uh, nitrogen nitrate well, well above uh, drink drinkable levels, and so on. Um, this was the, this was uh, the third uh, uh, wastewater treatment lagoon to collapse in just just less than ten years, and it's not restricted to uh, to Minnesota. They also got the same thing in Iowa, and if we do that in Wisconsin, guess what's going to happen here? Okay. Blanket injunction: Do not impound water for whatever reason in karstic areas. This is the groundwater contamination uh, susceptibility map made by uh, DNR in, in uh, 1980, 1983. And you can see that this entire area is at least moderately susceptible to, uh, to uh, groundwater contamination because it's karstic. Uh, I think, have I used up my 10 minutes? I have. Okay, well, I was going to talk some about. Extra time, though. What? You had some extra time on the front end, though. I do. Well, I was going to talk about uh, a little bit about uh, about high capacity wells, but you all know about high capacity wells. Oh, I, I, let me do that. So, back uh, five years, six years or so ago, I did a, a, a pilot study. I looked at all of the 600 wells that were drilled in uh, in the Viroqua Township since 1938, since I was two years old. Uh, this map shows the blue is, uh, is um, well, the green is the highest rock, that's the St. Peter. The rocks are almost flat. So the highest rock are the St. Peter. Underlying it uh, is the, uh, the Paradisheen Dolomite, which is the karstic rock. And then beneath that are the, are the Cambrian sandstone, from which we get our water. So I looked at all of these, uh, all of the 600 wells that were drilled in that period in this area, of them, of the 600 odd wells, 183 showed karstic features. There were also other wells that were drilled where you look at the log and there, there is no karst feature in them, but you know damn well the driller wasn't paying attention. If you're going to be in an area, right, all those green dots which don't report any karst must have been karst because everything else was. The driller just sat back, lit a, lit a cigar, and read Playboy about the drill. <laughs> okay, um, so 57 non-karstic, non so-called non-karstic, within one mile of a karstic well. Premium, idea, uh, premium Iowa pork wants to kill about 700 hogs a day, is that right? Yeah. And they'll, uh, they'll start build, bring, bring them in from Iowa, but they, what they really want to do is to have CAFOs, local CAFOs, in the area uh, to provide pigs. And guess what? Not a good idea. Uh, back, uh, I don't know how far back, uh, when was that eating? Ten years ago. Um, there's a there's a a, 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 a a pig farm called the, the Roth Pig Farm, and they were applying for a, a large a larger grant to, to to have more pigs to farrow. And I looked at just out of curiosity, I looked at all of the wells drilled around that area, and all of the karstic wells are the are the, uh, the red stars. And the pig farm has right. <laughs> They have karstic there, so enough said. That's my ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>